At dusk in Jurassic Germany, a small pterosaur awakes to begin collecting up the evening's insects. It was called a Neuronathus, and unlike any other pterosaurs, it had a small neck and round skull. Due to this, its appearance would have been more in line with that of a bat, yet it was soaring through the air a hundred million years before any mammal would take to the skies. And Neuronathus had many features outing it as a nocturnal insectivore, above just looking the part. Firstly, they had fur. Most pterosaurs had a light fur covering known as pycnofibers that would have been functionally similar to mammalian fur, but evolved independently, being an example of convergent evolution. And Neuronathus seemed to have been particularly furry, which was probably an adaptation for being out in the colder temperatures of the night. It has also been suggested that the fur may have silenced the flapping of their wings as they approached insects. This is something that is seen in owls that have an arrangement of feathers that allows them to stealthily approach field mice. They also had very large eyes for pterosaurs that would have helped them see in the dark and would have been extra useful because there is no reason to believe they had sonar. Although their body proportions are very similar to bats, the way they caught their prey may be better compared to the acrobatic flying bird species that hunt insects at night, like nightjars or swifts, that have no sonar and instead use their very large eyes to spot their prey in the dark. Because of this, it is thought that they were not active during the night, but would come out and hunt in the dusk and dawn. Animals that make an appearance at these times are known as crepuscular, which is a lifestyle that actually better describes many bat species. One of the Aneuronathus specimens discovered had small bumps around its mouth that might have been whiskers. Night jars also have whisker-like bristles around their mouth, and although it is not entirely understood why they have them, it has been suggested that they may protect their large eyes from escaping insects so a Neuronathus could have used them in the same way. Adding to this, a Neuronathus's wings were actually fairly analogous to the wings of nightjars and swifts, being quite short and thin allowing them to change direction quickly, and the joint of the finger their wing membrane was attached to was very flexible. These features would have been able to make them catch the swiftest of insects, including the dragonflies they shared their habitat with. However, their strength would have been strictly maneuverability, as this wing shape probably made them quite slow flyers. Unlike some of its aeroplane sized cousins, a Neuronathus was tiny and actually is one of the smallest pterosaurs ever discovered. It could sit in the palm of your hand being about the size of a greater mouse bat and is estimated to have weighed no more than 40 grams. A Neuronathus belonged to a family of pterosaurs called a Neuronathids that all possessed similar features, like the funny skulls that are wider than they are long, and they were all very small but a Neuronathus was still the smallest. The largest was a pterosaur named Gheholopterus that is found in China and was about twice the size of a Neuronathus, and due to its size difference and slightly different teeth, it is thought that they may not have been confined to just eating insects, and could have perhaps eaten larger animals, maybe even fish. The tiny size of a Neuronathus may have actually been a secret weapon, as it could have allowed them to evade predators by hugging trees. One of the two specimens this genus is known from is found with its wings crunched up very tightly. This stance is seen in other pterosaurs, but the Aneuronathus specimen is holding its wings at a particularly stressed angle, and this may have been an attempt to flatten itself up against certain objects to remain hidden. At this period of time in the Earth's history, Europe was a collection of tropical islands that may have looked similar to the Bahamas, and the habitat actually contained very few dinosaurs, and the few that it did contain were quite small, but it did have plenty of pterosaurs. It is possible that a Neuronathus may have not needed to be too concerned about the dinosaurs it shared its habitat with, and was actually at risk of being eaten by another larger pterosaur. A Neuronathus were in a group of pterosaurs known as Rampharynchoids, named after the pterosaur Rampharynchus, that coincidentally lived in the same habitat as a Neuronathus. This group were the more primitive pterosaurs, and the more dominant group in the late Triassic and throughout the Jurassic. Their features include sharp teeth, fat short wings, a long tail, and they were usually quite small, most of them being bird-sized. In the late Jurassic, a new group of pterosaurs evolved that eventually would take over, called the pterodactyloids. They weren't just larger, but they also had short tails, their hand bones were much more elongated, their wings were thinner and longer, and by the mid Cretaceous, they all had beaks, losing their teeth. Although a Neuronathus was a rampharynchoid, it shared features from both of these groups. It had very thin wings, but they were still short with small hands, and they also had no tail. In fact, their name means tailless jaw, because they were basically a mouth on wings. It may be that these features evolved independently, but many researchers have argued that Aneuronathids are the transitional group of pterosaurs between Rampharynchoids and Pterodactyloids. And if this is true, 
as these adaptations would have made them highly maneuverable while flying, helping them to catch their prey, the giant pteranodons and asdarkids of the Cretaceous may owe some of their specializations to these small pterosaurs that could fit in the palm of your hand. Enuronathus was discovered in the limestone of the Solnhofen formation in central Germany that is famed for its fantastically intact fossils, conditions that were good enough to preserve the feathers of Archaeopteryx. Although Enuronathid fossils are rare, it is thought that this is just due to their small size making it hard for their bodies to fossilize. And in fact, these small nocturnal hunters may have been a common sight in the Jurassic Twilight. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and would like to be notified of future content, then consider subscribing. A massive thank you goes to my patrons, especially Fossilworth and Greenforce. If you would like to support me as well, then you can go to Patreon and make a pledge.